An in the hoop or ITH plush is when a plush is sewn mostly or entirely by an embroidery machine. This is how it gets its name since all the work is done in the hoop of an embroidery machine. Your machine will stitch out both the details on the plush and also sew it together. Often they'll have a hoop sewn in to turn them into a charm or a keychain, but they can also just be a standalone plush. Sometimes the plush are stuffed after they're sewn and sometimes they're left flat, which is often the case for charms. These plush are usually also two dimensional. Additional parts can be hand sewn to make them look 3D, but this begins to bend the definition of an in the hoop plush since some of the sewing is being done by the artist and not by the embroidery machine. In the hoop plush are frequently also single sided, which means they only have details on the front and the back is a solid color. This is because it's significantly more difficult to make a double sided in the hoop plush. Of course, these patterns require an embroidery machine to make, and usually the seller will provide many different file formats since each machine generally takes a different file type. It's important to see the size requirements of the design before you buy one because you won't be able to sew an in the hoop pattern that is larger than your machine's embroidery area. For example, you cannot sew a 5x7 inch in the hoop pattern in a 4 inch by 4 inch machine unless you resize it. And often you can't resize embroidery files more than just a few percent without the file losing its integrity. Here's the general process for how they're made. Each one's going to be different, so you should follow the instructions that come with any files you buy if there are any. You should always use a hoop that is just larger than your design. So if your machine can do a five x seven, but if you're making a four x four in the hoop plush, you should use your four x four hoop. Cut a piece of tear away stabilizer that is larger than your hoop. It needs to be larger so that it can rest securely in the hoop. If you cut it too small, the stabilizer will just fall out of the hoop. Tear away stabilizer is the best for in the hoop plush since as the name implies, you can tear it all away once you're done stitching out the plush. If you use a type of stabilizer like cutaway, it can't be removed from the seams of the plush, which will affect the stretch and the shape. Depending on your design and your type of tearaway stabilizer, you may use one or two pieces of tearaway stabilizer layered on top of each other. If I'm making a very embroidery or applique heavy design like my chocolate covered strawberry dittos, I'll use two pieces because the tearaway stabilizer can rip away during the embroidery process if you only use one layer. But for more simple designs like my cowboy dittos, which only have an embroidered face and boots, I'll only use one sheet. If you use more than one sheet, it will be more work to tear it away later on. And if you really don't need it, you're just wasting materials, so it's something to consider. If you're going to use more than one sheet of stabilizer, go ahead and cut it out. Frequently, I will cut this second sheet smaller, only the width of the inside of the hoop to save on materials. The first piece will be enough to securely hoop the stabilizer, and then the second piece's purpose is just for extra strength during the embroidery process, so it doesn't need to be as wide as the first. Cut out your base fabric pieces according to your directions. It'll often just be the size of your hoop. So if you're using a four inch by four inch hoop, you're gonna cut out two pieces that are about the size of the inside of the hoop. The inside of the hoop is actually a little bit larger than your maximum embroidery area, just to give you a little bit of wiggle room. So because of this, I often just trace the inside of my inner hoop just to be safe. And then you'll also frequently need smaller cuts of fabric for details like when you're doing applique. Spray the stabilizer with embroidery basting spray. There are many different brands, but you want something that is temporary and made for embroidery. The purpose of the spray is to keep the fabric in place. We purposely spray the stabilizer and not the fabric because if you spray the fabric, it's going to get nasty and sticky and you won't be able to get the spray out. It's also going to gum up your needle. If you spray the stabilizer, it'll allow the fabric to stay in place, but it won't transfer to the fabric. I keep a piece of cardboard larger than my stabilizer handy to spray the stabilizer on. I purposely do not spray the stabilizer after it's been hooped to keep my hoops clean. You can see how dirty this piece of cardboard is. That's what my hoop would look like if I sprayed this stabilizer in the hoop. If you're using a second piece of tearaway stabilizer, go ahead and layer it on top of the first piece. And then you're gonna use your basting spray again on top of that. Now we will hoop the stabilizer in the embroidery hoop. Your hoop should be loose enough so that you're able to snap the inner hoop in place, but tight enough so that when you tap on the stabilizer, it sounds like a drum. It shouldn't be loose. You can loosen your hoop and then hoop your stabilizer and then tighten it, but it won't make as secure of a connection as getting it right just from the beginning. 
place one of the pieces of base fabric down that you cut out earlier. If you're using a fabric like Minky that has a nap, pay attention to its direction. Which way should it point for your design? Make sure it's running that way. Smooth down the fabric with your hand. This will make it stick to the sprayed stabilizer. Use an embroidery weight bobbin thread. This will often be 60 to 90 weight. You can buy pre-wound bobbins if you go through them a lot. Just make sure that they will fit in your machine. Make sure that you're using a needle that is made for embroidery. Place the hoop in your machine. Make sure it locks in place. Load your design. What you do next is going to depend on the design and your fabric, so again, pay attention to the instructions if you have any. Does it have applique? Then you're probably going to stitch that out first. Applique is when you lay another piece of fabric on top of the base fabric and allow the machine to stitch it in place. This will be done for color transitions or other details. Designs will often choose applique over an embroidery fill for a softer result. Having a huge area for embroidery not only makes the plush harder to the touch, but it also takes a ton of thread and time to stitch out. Applique often consists of three stitches. A placement stitch that is a straight stitch that tells you where to lay down the fabric. A tack down zigzag stitch that stitches the fabric into place. And then you trim away the excess fabric outside of the area you want it in. And finally, an embroidery satin stitch that goes over the edges to make it look clean and finished. If you're using minky, fleece, faux fur, or other fabrics that are thick and the stitches sink into them, you'll need to use water-soluble stabilizer before doing any embroidery like the satin stitch on the applique. It's not necessary to use this before applique on fabrics like minky or fleece, but if you're stitching faux fur or luxe cuddle minky, it can help keep the long fibers of the base fabric in place. These thin plastic sheets prevent the stitches from sinking too far into the fabric. The design will not stitch out as intended if you don't use it. The stitches can even become invisible. I've tried a few different types of water-soluble stabilizer, but my favorite is the Sulky Salvi. It's soft and easy to tear away, and when you wash it away, it doesn't leave the thread hard or discolor it. But you shouldn't wash away all of it. You should pick off the majority that you can, and then if you have any little bits and pieces left over, then you can wash that away. If your design only has embroidery, you can just lay down a piece of water-soluble stabilizer on top of the base fabric after you've placed it on the hoop stabilizer. You can tape it in place outside of the embroidery area with tape, or you can just lay it on top. But if you lay it on top, it can easily shift out of place and you may end up stitching outside of the stabilizer like what happened here. Proceed through each stitch on your machine. It will stop when you need to change the thread colors and tell you what color to use and give you a little preview of what the next stitch is. Cut any jump stitches before starting the next color. But for applique, it will stop between each of the three stitches, allowing you to place the fabric down and trim it. Sometimes it will tell you to change the color of thread, but you actually shouldn't. This is because when you design applique in an embroidery program, it's often easier just to tell the machine to stop by switching the colors, and it's not actually intended for you to change the thread color. When you're done with all the embroidery and applique, gently remove the water-soluble stabilizer from the top. Because you use tearaway stabilizer, it can be easy to rip the fabric off of the stabilizer. This is really bad because everything is gonna shift out of place. So hold your fabric down with one hand and gently remove the stabilizer with your other hand. You may be prompted to add a ribbon or a loop to turn the plush into a charm. The area where you need to lay the ribbon may or may not be indicated on the design. If it's not, it's often just going to be at the top center. You can cut a piece of ribbon to your desired length and make sure you get one that doesn't fray at the edges or have a wire. It should just stick out past the area where the seam is going to be stitched so that you can ensure that it's captured entirely by the seam stitch. If there is no stitch to tack it in place, you can tape it in place beyond the stitching line. If your ribbon is too long, you should also tape it within the seam allowance of your plush so it doesn't get caught in the seam where it's not supposed to. Finally, you will lay down the back piece of fabric on top with right sides together. Make sure the nap is facing the right direction. Use a color thread that matches your base fabric. The machine will stitch the seam that forms the plush for you. You can secure the fabric in place with pins well outside the stitching area, but I usually just hold on to the edges so that I can brush out any folds that form, which can easily happen. But make sure you're careful if you do this. You do not want to get your hand anywhere close to that needle. This is why double-sided in the hoop patterns aren't as common. You can imagine how hard it is to line up details with this method. 
Since the fabric is joined to the stabilizer, it's hard to pin things in place precisely. And as the machine stitches out the plush, the foot can shift the fabric, causing any design stitched on the back to move out of place. When you're done, you can remove the fabric from the hoop. Tear away the stabilizer from the back. You will usually need to cut away the bobbin thread jump stitches on the back too, because this can make it harder to tear away the stabilizer. You want to remove as much as you can because this can affect the softness and stretch of the plush. Cut out the plush using a small 1 8 inch to quarter inch seam allowance. You want to snip in close to any inward facing points like on these feet here so that the shapes will be defined. Just make sure not to snip any stitches. The way you flip it out will depend on the design. Did the seam leave a gap in the stitches? If it did, you can flip it right side out here. If it didn't, you're intended to cut a small hole in the back of the plush. It can be small, about a half inch wide, just wide enough for you to be able to flip it right side out. It's often easier to do this with forceps or hemostats. Use this tool or a pair of chopsticks or a point turner to push out any corners and edges. Cut away any remaining jump stitches or stray threads. You may or may not want to stuff the plush at this point. Charms are often left flat with no stuffing in them. My favorite stuffing for in the hoop patterns is mochi stuffing because it's so soft and wispy. It's really good for small plush and it can easily get into small areas. I also use forceps to stuff these plush. Now you need to hand sew the plush close. Use a ladder stitch to close the hole. This is an invisible stitch that, if done well, should look very nice and clean. If you cut a hole into the back of the plush, you would also use this method, but the stitching on a plush open this way is never going to be as clean as a plush left with an opening in the seam. If you're using minky or faux fur, you can use a pin to pull out the fibers from the hand stitching to make it look more invisible. After that, if you have any extra pieces to hand sew onto your plush, go ahead and do so. For example, on my bee dittos, the body was done entirely in the hoop and then I hand sewed the wings onto this plush. And the wings were also made with an in the hoop pattern. In the hoop patterns are really fun and versatile and I enjoy making them myself. And I hope you do too.